What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Sam here and in today's video, I wanna give you some tips for designing for direct-to-garment printing, as well as show you how to make this cool flower t-shirt inside of Photoshop using free assets. So whether you're a clothing brand owner looking to make the designs for your brand yourself or a graphic designer working with brands or clients, this video will be very useful for you. Let's go. So the first thing I like to do before starting a design is hop onto Pinterest and mood board ideas. Pinterest is my favorite place for this and everywhere else is second. Everywhere else meaning that wherever I am on the internet, if I see something I like or it inspires me in some way, I'll take a screenshot, put it on a folder in my phone and just save it for later. And then when I'm out of ideas or need some inspiration, I'll just check back through that folder and have a look. But Pinterest is always number one for me, first of all. So here's a quick mood board I've put together for today's designs. Mood boards can be as big or as small as you like, as long as they inspire you, the designer, or they can be used to communicate ideas to other people. So they're really just a way of collaborating ideas between yourself or communicating ideas to other people. So they can just be a selection of random images. They can be actual t-shirt designs, anything that inspires you or can communicate a certain style or look to another person to get you all on the same page. I'm so bad at explaining stuff. I really hope that makes sense to someone. Anyway, so let me just talk you through this mood board and why it makes sense to me. So I wanna do a flower design. I've got two flower pictures here. The flowers are quite messy in terms of they're not central. They're a little bit, the leaves are a little bit all over the place. So I like that. So that's what I wanna go for. This uh, gothic font, I really like that. And I really like how it's over the middle of the design and central with an outline so you can see through it. That's why I've picked that, des that design there. That's the only thing I'm focusing on. And then this design here, the crazy gradient map. So I'm thinking a really colorful uh, gradient map on a flower with the sort of gothic font over the top of it. It's also important to remember that mood boards don't have to be for one design. They can be for a whole collection. So the drop stays cohesive and all the designs look like they work together. Um, you could also, if you're a clothing brand owner, you could mood board your brand so that the artistic direction stays consistent and you just kind of know what you're going for. So now we have an idea of what we want to design. Where can we get images or assets to use in the design that are actually legal to use and okay to print on a t-shirt. So Unsplash is a great place to start, a really good website, everything on it is free and you can use it for t-shirts if you want to or any commercial project. There is also Pexels, another one of my favorites. And there is also the site that I use the most, which is Invato Elements. I have an affiliate link for Invato Elements if you're serious about upping your design game. What it is, it's a paid for service that includes fonts, images, 3D assets, illustrations, video stuff, you name it. It's got everything on it and it's all legal. Uh, you get the license to use all this stuff in commercial projects. So it's an amazing resource, totally worth the money. If you want to support the channel, check out the affiliate link. But today we're just going to be focusing on assets that you can use for free. So I've been browsing Unsplash and I found this cool vintage flower picture that I really want to use in my design. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to bring it into Photoshop later. But first we need to find out what director garment service we're going to be using and then look at their guidelines and find out how we set up our document in Photoshop so that when we upload the image to their website, that it's actually gonna work and we're not gonna have any problems. So let's do that now. So I'm on the website for Printful. If you don't know Printful, it's a pretty popular direct to garment printing service. And I'm just gonna have a browse and try and find the guidelines for our Photoshop document. So I've clicked on one of the popular garments that they offer for printing. And normally if you scroll down, you'll see somewhere, here we are 12 to 16 inches. Uh, 12 by 16 inches so that's the document size that we need to make in photoshop and you can actually download guidelines or a print template um, to actually use in photoshop if you want to but we're going to set that up manually so you know what you're doing and you don't have to follow templates let's go okay so let's get our document set up for printful 12 by 16 inches 300 dpi very important for printing rgb color mode and a black background because we're going to be designing this for a black t-shirt now we can import the vintage flowers we found on Unsplash. And the first thing we want to do is remove the background. So we head over to the layers panel, right click and click rasterize layer. From here, somewhere on the properties window, you should see a quick actions option for remove background. Now, sometimes this quick action works well and sometimes it doesn't. 
As you can see, it's missed quite a lot of the background this time. So we're gonna have to go in manually and sort it out. Make sure the layer mask is selected in the layers panel. Head on over to brushes and make sure the hardness is at 100%. Now using a black brush, we can manually go in and remove more of the background. I also decided to shorten the stem a little bit. It just seemed a bit too long to me. Next up, we're gonna add some effects to the flowers. Head over to the layers panel and add a curves adjustment layer. Hold Alt and click in between the curves layer and the flowers layer to clip it. This will mean that the curves layer will only affect the flowers. And next up, we're gonna add a gradient map adjustment layer above the curves layer and clip it just like before. Now we can edit the gradient map colors and come up with something crazy. To add a new color to the gradient, just click below the gradient box and a new little color box will appear and then you can change that color to whatever you want. You can do some really wild stuff with gradient maps, so experiment and have fun. So here's what I eventually came up with. It looks really cool. I don't normally go for this much color, but it's good to get out your comfort zone and try and do something different for a change. Once you're happy with your gradient, we now want to click on the curves adjustment layer that we made earlier. Now, if we click on the curves line and move it about, we can see that it makes further adjustments to the gradient map. You can make several points on this line to move, so it just gives you some more control over the colors. Once you're happy, stick everything we've done so far, apart from the background, into its own group and name it to keep the layers panel tidy. Next, I'm going to add a rectangle behind the flowers using the rectangle tool. I wanted to give the orange rectangle some texture, so I imported a grunge background also found on Unsplash and dragged that over the top of it and then change the blend mode to soft light. I decided to add some noise to the rectangle since the flowers are quite grainy looking already. So this helps it fit in a little better. It might be hard to see the difference on mobile, but if you're watching on a computer, you should be able to see. If I zoom in a little bit now, you should be able to see the difference that that's made. It seems like such a small thing, but when the design's printed quite large on a t-shirt, it will make a difference rather than just a plain orange square. I noticed when I zoomed in just there that the gradient map has highlighted that the leaves aren't cut out as well as I would have liked. So I'm just gonna have to neaten that up quickly before we move on. I feel like I'd like the orange rectangle to be a little paler. So I'm going to put everything through the rectangle into its own group, just like we did with the flower. And then I'm gonna add a levels adjustment layer to that group. Remember to clip the levels adjustment to the rectangle layer or group. And then if we drag the bottom black slider, we can basically alter the contrast of the orange square and make it more pale. Now I'm just gonna add a very small inner stroke to the flowers, which will help tighten up the leaves a little bit. I'm going to use the same shade of pink that's already been used in the gradient map. If we zoom in now, you can see that the leaves just look a little sharper. Now it's time to add in our text. The font I'm using today is called Old London, which is a free font and it's also free for commercial use. If I remember, I'll give you a download link in the description for this font, but if I forget, just stick it in the comments and I'll add it. To turn this into an outline, we need to head over to the layers panel and take all the fill out of the text and then add a stroke. If you're going to put text in front of an image, then this is a great option so you can still see what's underneath. I also always position the stroke on the inside of text so it doesn't actually affect the text shape. Now I'm gonna place some small text down the bottom of the design in line with the rectangle to fill it out a bit. To balance out the top right corner of the design, I'm gonna add some circle text. Grab the ellipse tool and hold down shift to make a perfect circle. Now grab your text tool and hover over the edge of the circle until you see a wavy line. Now when you click, your text will be in a circle shape. Now you can delete the ellipse because the text will now stay in a circle shape. A few adjustments and this design is finished. Let's see how it looks mocked up. Thanks so much for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. That is my most active social media for all news and all updates and all that kind of thing. Catch you in the next video. Peace.